Hey everybody, Tim Hodge here. Today uh, I'm going to take you through uh, how I do a little pen and ink and watercolor postcard I'm going to send out. Uh, I'm going to start with these little Strathmore postcards. I'm not the only company that makes them, but they're one of my favorites. Um, just little, uh, what are they, four by six uh, sheets of cold press watercolor paper. They've got little look on the back they've got a little place where you can write someone's address and I put a stamp on there and all um, yeah they get a little dinged up in the uh, in the process they get a little marks on them from the machines that they have to run through but for me that's kind of part of the journey when somebody gets it they know it's it's uh, it's been through something um, I'm going to also use my little um, my little watercolor set I've got a, a nice full set of watercolors and tubes and stuff but there's something about this little travel set that I just it's just comforting to use. So let's get started, all right? Let's uh, start drawing. Now I'm gonna be working with, again, with a black wing uh, pencil today. I, I, um, I work with other uh, mediums sometimes. I, I like uh, water-soluble colored pencils at times or just something that's lighter, but um, today I'm gonna do, I'll work with my trusty black wing, which means, because it's a very soft lead, that I can't draw too dark because if so, it makes it really hard to erase, and when you rub over the paper, it, can, it um, destroys the surface for, for water coloring. So I'm gonna draw very light. Uh, this is gonna be a young gorilla. I'm gonna have his head tilted a little bit. Uh, I didn't realize I've already got his eye line a little bit high. But I like the general posture of gorillas when they're on all, when they're you know walking along on the on all fours and they get so much weight is on their their hands and a beautiful sway in their back I was scooting my drawing way down out of view so we only have the general idea I think I've got yeah, I have my sketches here I'm gonna set those out of camera view here I think I tilted his head too much. I'm gonna bring it back up a little bit like that. Eyes are low. Right here, I'm gonna put his muzzle. Now he doesn't have that giant crest and that, like a, a full-grown male would. Let's see if he's gonna have a little surprise expression on his head. Even though he doesn't have the you know big giant head like a, a full-grown male would, it did keep it rather large because to make something look young, you want to keep the facial features small and low on the head. There. No, I really don't like where that the placement of that head. So very carefully. Erase that. Yeah, there we go. That just feels better. Shoulder up high. Made him a little. I'm gonna bring that belly in so he looks a little younger. There we go. And notice his back paws, paws, hands, feet are are on a two dimensionally. They're higher because the ground plane is going back. You know, in perspective. We're not going to see a lot of these hand, these fingers on this side. Might see a little bit of this knuckle, com uh, knuckle, the thumb coming down there. Okay, that's my general placement and outline for this character. This little gorilla boy. Now I am going to ink him with um, a brush pen. I'm going to use this Pentel pocket brush. I don't know if you can see that. 
uh, there we go, Pentel pocket brush. Um, these are great. I know I've, I've shown these before. They have a, an ink cartridge inside. It's waterproof ink, so I can watercolor over it, and it won't smear my lines. Okay, I'm going to start with his eyes here. Working with a brush is tricky and takes a lot of patience and a lot of practice because the, the, the thickness of the line varies so much with just the slightest increase or decrease of pressure. So if you want a thin line, you barely just kiss the paper with the tips of, that, the tips of your brush, or the bristles. And this brush pen too, this has real bristles in it. These are like nylon uh, um, fibers in there. It's not like a, a, some of the felt tip brush pens, which I do like, but I generally like these better. Just, for, just to give an example, because I'm gonna be working really light, um, this is a practice piece here. See, if I wanna do a thin line, I just barely touch it but I can press harder and harder and harder and get these beautiful thick lines. And if I wanted to, you know, you know, draw something like that, this doesn't look like anything, but you can get some beautiful, real nice thick swooshy lines. But for this one, I need something a little more controlled. Yeah, I've lost my point. There that example I gave left the, the ends of the, the point of the brush rather ragged and was going to give me a rough line. Little ear on this side. This is so tiny too. This is, this is kind of mind harrowing with this. No drawing so small. Yeah. Once you lay that ink down, it's going to stay there too. There's no more racing at this point. I just indicate a little bit of hair here and there. But generally a smooth line and then add little tufts when the something changes direction like that. You know, it doesn't look quite as young as I intended, but I do like the look, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Now here, I don't want to draw this line solid down because the arm does connect. So the, his shoulder is going to overlap a little bit where the back comes down there. And then the rest of his arm, that tricep back there. That big tuft of hair where his elbow is. And I'm going to just do a little bit of a wavy line here to indicate each knuckle. And then where his pinky folds around there, just gonna see the corner of it. See how that line gets a little thicker for his chest? I want I like doing thicker lines around the bottom of shapes. It um it kind of helps with the shadow, makes it feel a little rounder if there are thinner lines on top and thicker lines on the bottom. You can see I'm putting a lot more detail in these ink lines where I just, you know, in my um, in pencil lines, I just did a little swish, a little swoop to indicate the thumb, but then when I'm going back in ink, I'm showing where that folds around. And, uh, you know, where his, not, where his thumb knuckle is bent. Now here, I've got to be careful. I don't want to create a tangent. Now, 
I've got to make sure I follow this line here, this where it comes off his chest and comes down here to his belly. I want to make sure that that connects so it looks like it's all part of one shape, just like that. It's a teeny tiny drawing in a way. I usually like to draw a little bit bigger because drawing so small is less room for mistakes. Yeah, like right there. Let's see if I can fix that, make it look like here. Yeah, I might be able to adjust that when I get the watercolor on it. Just the slightest bumps in those lines for his feet to show the knuckles there. Not just a smooth line like he's wearing gloves or anything. And his other back leg, we're just going to see just a sliver of it. Now I've got some other things in mind I want to do for the background, putting some foliage and a ground plane and things. but. Um, that I don't want to have outlines around. I want the, the lines just around the character so he pops out better. And I've got to let this dry. All right, now that the ink lines are dry, I'm going to very carefully erase my pencil lines. And then sometimes, even though I think they're dry, especially in those thicker areas, there's like a little bitty damp spot. And when I erase it, it just smears. Then you have to start all over. There we go. All right then. I got my I got my watercolors out over here. Uh, I'm going to actually stick my. This is, like I said, this is a needed eraser. Ah. I'm gonna stick it right there on the on the board. So my my drawing table slanted a little bit, and I don't want that to be. I don't want my paints to be rolling down on top of me. There, can we still see everything? I'm gonna move the paints over there just a little bit so you can see the drawing better. Now, on my set here, I don't have black paint, but I do have ultramarine. And I have burnt umber and when you mix those two like I do over here on this bottom palette I don't know if you can see that very well yeah we go if you mix blue and bl um, blue and brown as ultramarine or even Prussian blue which I don't you know that or and uh, and burnt umber, you get a really deep, It's it looks black, but you can tint it. It's, I'm gonna, it gets a little bit of a blue cast or a brown cast, and it looks better than just a straight, a straight black. Uh, this might be a little thick. I'll bring my test over here so you have, uh, yeah, there we go. That's like a nice, that's what I want, a nice bluish black there. And I'm going to be very careful getting here. I don't want to get in his eyes. And because I'm working on a slanted surface, the, the, the weight of the water is going to draw the paint down to the bottom of the page. So it will tend to get a little darker and th thicker and therefore darker at the bottom of the character, which is great because it, it helps. It feels like uh, like it's shaded at the bottom of his face here. You can already tell it's darker. So it feels like there's a bit of a shadow on it, right? I'm leaving his some of his facial features blank because I'm going to paint them in a little bit thinner, be a little bit lighter. And I know generally on, on gorillas, their fur and their skin is kind of the same color, but I just want a little bit of variance so it looks a little more interesting. Get a little there. I'm touching this up 
area here. I'm going to get that pretty dark on the top. I have to kind of fight gravity here because I want a bit of a shadow cast from his head down onto his arm. Uh, losing some of my density of the paint. Mix up a little bit more. Watercolors very, can be very temperamental. That's kind of what I like about it. It kind of does its own thing. And it surprises you. And most of the time, I like those surprises. Or if you, if you know what the tendencies, tendencies of the paint are and know where it's going to bleed or generally or can get an idea for it, you can kind of direct it to do what you want, even though it's going to do its own thing. It's kind of like training a cat. <laughs> and yes, I'm not going all the way up to the line here on his back because I want a little bit of a rim light. I'm going to thin this out, this paint out just a little bit more. Get a lighter shade of gray. Now, watercolors tend to dry just a tiny bit lighter than they Go down wet, so you kind you have to um, a little too much water in that. Um, you have to prepare yourself for that and plan. Like, okay, it's not going to be as dark as it looks, so paint it a little bit darker than you intend. So when it dries, it's just the right color. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a lot of water in this paint right here that I'm putting down. And it's going to take a long time to dry. I've put to thin out the color. I've put extra water in it, but I think I've put a little too much. So I'm drying out my brush and going back and absorbing little bits of it. I might have to go back and touch that up because that's, even though it's about the right color, like I said, it's going to dry just a little bit lighter. And I'm going to go back and get his fingers. And this the paint on his arm is still wet, so me putting down some lighter paint, it's going to blend well with what I laid down before. There. Okay, let's get this ground plane first. I'm going to get a little bit of this ochre and a little bit of this olive green. For yeah, yeah, still you can see, see the reflection there. It's still wet on his stomach, but his, arms, his arm looks dry and his fingers, so I can paint around that part. That I don't like colors that are that look like they're right out of the paint box. And they're and they're too bright, especially for the background. If I if I I want the background to be more muted so that the characters pop out even better. Now, even though this gorilla is not a bright character, um, you know, color wise, He's nice and dark, and it's going to have a lot of nice contrast as, he, as it is if I keep the background fairly light. But uh, Let's go back to the green. Add a little more green to that green ochre mix. Yeah. I'm going to lay this down pretty wet and really thin. I'm going to build up on this some layers of foliage and just a nice soft green here in the background again you can see where the water is pooling up there and I've got to go back with I dab my I'm dabbing my brush over here on the paper towel and getting it dry and absorbing places where there's too much water I'm gonna let that get mostly dry. I want to paint wet on wet so it looks a little blurry. And pulling some of my darker green here. Uh, I can't remember. The, I think that's hooker's green. Yeah. It's a little more vibrant. You can see already. 
so it's not as dull as the olive, but I mix it in with the olive so it doesn't look too, too, you know, I want to draw too much attention to itself. Okay, so we can draw like these palm fronds coming out here. I see where the paint was was wet already. See how it's it's losing its definition. It's very or kind of blurry and fading. And uh, I love that. That's what I'm talking about. Just the the nature of a watercolor when it wants to do its own thing. And it likes to. Go a little wild here and there, even though you, even here where you can see down his arm that little that's called a blossom where the uh, two um, wet areas kind of butted up against each other and then the paint pooled in the middle. As that paper dries, it's going to be less and less be able to get that effect. So I can go back over on this side and sharpen up these palm fronds just a little bit. There. Of course, we need the shadow under him. And I'm going to cool that colored down a little bit because it's going to be a, just a darker shade of the of the ground color so I'm going to mix up some more of that but just a just a dab of blue in there there I'm considering the lights pretty much right over him, so the shadow's going to be right underneath. It's not going to be cast to the side or anything. And luckily, this drawing's not very realistic, so I can make the lighting not very realistic, too. Now, yeah, this is just a, some clean water to smooth out the edge there. And while I'm doing that, those background leaves are drying just a little bit more. And I can go back and do some other layers of foliage. That's looking kind of funny. Eh? I think that's about done. Here we go. There we go. So, there we have it, our little gorilla friend. That was fun, eh? If you enjoyed this and want to see some more demonstrations, I, I do, uh, you know, subscribe here on my YouTube channel. I do uh, demonstrations every so often. Also, if you want to, uh, to uh, enjoy some drawing lessons, I have a video series that I've put together with Aaron Blaze over on his site. Uh, the link is in the, in the, in the description. It's uh, creatureartteacher.com, creatureartteacher.com, and you can look for my name there. I've got, I have some cartooning animal lessons. Uh, again, look around the site. Aaron's got some wonderful lessons there. I'm sure you'll find more that you want. Uh, again, thanks for watching and come back lots and lots of times.